بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This is دكتور صادق محمود حسن أما دخت الصديق And today's lecture will be And as I promise it I will be recording a short videos uh, That I will discuss especially anatomy and physiology These short videos And I will divide them into categories Anatomy, especially anatomy physiology, uh, and I will discuss in a separate videos which will be serious, seria, the muscular system, the nervous system, in in the brain, circulatory system, lymphatic, respiratory, digestive, urinary, and I will discuss every one uh, of this. Uh, and of each of this video separate and each of this circular and systems I mean each of this system separate in a, a separate video so the last previous uh, the previous video was uh, talking about a uh, nervous system in general but I concentrated central nervous system especially yeah, I mean peripheral nervous system, sorry, I, I concentrated peripheral, uh, peripheral nervous system, especially cranial nerves. So I discuss it if we single cranial nerve, it is origin, distribution, and it is action or innervation. So, but now today's video is a circulatory system. So... Uh, I will uh, divide this uh, circulatory videos and uh, into four short videos. Each will be separate. One, the first one will be introductory or introduction. So I will discuss about generally what, what is going on in the blood, what are what is the circulatory video is about in generally, whether it is a blood physicalis, the heart, and 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 and. And, and the, it is component is and how it works is the player and it is component is and the heart and how it works is so the first show you uh, first video will be introductory so I will take examples from each one whether it is a blood a heart as an example and player facilities as an instructors so let me begin with a short video as an introductory uh, video yes so let us watch this video and veins carry blood back to the heart circulating blood supplies cells throughout the body with oxygen and removes waste carbon dioxide Oxygen is absorbed into the bloodstream through tiny air sacs in the lungs called alveoli. As oxygen diffuses in, carbon dioxide moves out and is exhaled. Yes, uh, this was a short video about circulatory system in general, uh, uh, as it is composed of heart and blood, uh, blood vasculature. So whether it is artery, venous, or capillary. So let us discuss if one of them separately and here you see the skeleton or the, is the ischemic anatomy of a heart, blood, physicalis whether they are arteries or venous in general so the, the, uh, I will highlight first heart I will discuss it a little bit. What is heart? So as you see heart here, and it's a hollow muscular organ that pumps blood throughout the body. It's a it's the major organ of the cardiovascular system. The heart weight is approximately 300 gram. It is like, it's less than 500 gram. It is almost, a, uh, it is approximately 300 gram, okay? So, and it is about 12 centimeter by 9 centimeter and 6 centimeter in size. And it's located between the lungs in the middle of the mediastinum. So, mediastinum 
according to the heart position of the heart, the mediastinum is divided into every structure which is front of the heart uh, is called uh, first. Uh, uh, the heart lies in the middle uh, mediastinum, mid mediastinum, which is middle middle mediastinum. Yeah. So let us <laughs> let us not discuss that now. But let us continue what is heart about. So it approximately which is 300 and the heart comprises four chambers enclosed by a heart wall. The three layers of the tissue make up the heart wall. Yes, and the motor outermost layer is the epicardium, the middle and the thickest is the myocardium. The first is outer layer is the epicardium, and the uh, second one, which is the middle, is the and is the thickest, which is the largest or strong. As a muscle is a myocardium, as a myo is a Greek word saying uh, Latin word muscle, muscle. So an internal. And, it's, and the internal one, the, the innermost one is the endocardium. So the hollow inside the heart is subdivided. The heart, the hollow chambers, they subdivided by a muscular septum into a right and left halves. So uh, <clears throat> what we call muscular septum divides the, uh, the heart into right and left halves, each with two cavities. The upper two cavities call it atria, and the lower cavities are ventricles. So together these two atria and two ventricles make up the four heart chambers. These chambers pass these chambers pass and receive blood through the pulmonary venous and great facilities that lead in and out of the heart. A contraction of the a heart contraction of the myocardium controlled by contraction system, contraction system of the heart pumps blood through the facilities and heart chambers. Venous blood entering the heart, red atrium from both inferior and superior vena cava passes blood, uh, through the right atrioventricular tricuspid and into the right atrium. From the right ventricle, the blood is pumped through, through the tricuspid pulmonary valve into the lungs via pulmonary arteries. What about oxygenated blood? Then returns into the right into the heart via pulmonary venous. So oxygenated blood passes into the left atrium, passes to the cuspid at your atrioventricular mitral valve and into the left atrium. The left atrium has uh, then pumps blood, uh, oxygenated blood into uh, and pass tricuspid aortic valve into the aorta and then into on the rest of the body. So that is the heart. Let us see what is what is going on in blood facilities. So what are blood facilities? Now we see and we highlighted only arteries. We highlighted the only arteries which you see here are arteries. So when we are talking about the heart and arteries, what kind of arteries are we talking about now here? So the arteries Coronary arteries, let's take example. The coronary arteries, the blood facilities involved for the systemic circulation. They provide blood, uh, they provide blood supply to the heart tissue, significant amount of oxygenated blood that leaves the heart a left ventricle through the aorta, returns to the heart through a coronary artery. So the coronary arteries are, sub, are divided into the right and left branches. So both begin at the aorta and extend it through branches to encircle the heart. So blood facilities, which uh, the coronary arteries which supply the heart are very important, especially when there is a, so if there is a, a one blood occlusion, occlusion of one blood, uh, one blood vessel, 
this will be a very torture. It an heart attack. It causes heart attack. So the current, I will, I will, dis, I will discuss the, um, pathologies and internal medicine in a separate videos. Uh, so the coronary arteries along with the coronary veins create a system of circulatory or coronary circulation that supplies and retains blood between the heart chambers and tissues, heart tissue. Okay, the heart, the red heart has a red coronary artery and its branches provide blood supply to the red atrium and ventricles. What, what about the left or coronary artery? So left coronary artery and its branches provide a blood supply to the left atrium and left ventricle. So the left coronary artery is larger than the right atrium. And it, there is a three reasons in here. One is that the left atrium, uh, the left atrium is larger. Uh, 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 the current left coronary artery supplies the left heart side, especially left ventricle so left ventricle is muscle of the left ventricle is stronger three times than that of the right side and i will discuss the three reasons in later videos so these are now as you see here now are vessels which blood vessels are now highlighted they are veins so coronary veins in general coronary veins are uh, blood, coronary veins. The blood vessels involved in systemic circulation are collection of the veins that run between the left atrium and left ventricles and carry deoxygenated blood from the heart tissue into the right atrium. So coronary veins include the coronary sinus, the very big sinus, and veins that converge into it, small cardiac veins. But the posterior vein of the left ventricle, the middle cardiac vein, and the anterior cardiac vein, veins of the right ventricle. Some of the anterior cardiac veins drain directly into the right atrium. What, what do they do? They drain directly into the right atrium. So, and if. <laughs> كشر حيو مركا لكشر توسا هلكا وحن كدي قلها مقرنا سعر ديبان سين لها اكزيسيس وقدي قلها انو انو سو شرحو او سو عدا يمقع مهشا اللي ده دو ايو فين كسو كشو بي يمقع يسي ديستريبيشن كيسا با بات the coronary sinus is open into the right atrium between the orifices of inferior vena cava and atrial ventricular opening so the semicircular semicircular uh, what we call semicircular valve are the orifice of the coronary sinus the valves or the valve of the coronary sinus prevent the regurgitation of a blood back into the sinus during contraction of the heart so and uh, this is the coronary circulation so let us see and now highlight arteries and veins in general so what are general veins? Now, let us say the arteries. These are in general, the arteries are in general. Okay, arteries are a facilities of the circulatory system that supply, that support the circulation by conveying blood pumping from the heart through the body. The system, the system, or systemic circulation arteries. In the systemic circulation arteries and their branches support or transport, uh, I mean transport oxygenated blood and venous and, and venous carry out uh, deoxygenated blood. Okay, the roles are inferred in the pulmonary circulation. How is that? The pulmonary arteries convey deoxygenated blood when Blood, oxygenated blood from the right atrium to the lungs and pulmonary veins transport oxygen rich blood from the lung to the ventricles. So oxygenated blood is pumped out of the left ventricle into the aorta. So the oh, what is aorta? Aorta is the body's largest artery. So the systemic circulation complicated 
and the systemic circulation a complicated series of uh, tubes what are these arteries arteriolus and capillaries that, that branch repeatedly in uh, their course throughout the body distributed distributes the oxygenated blood throughout body tissues in general large arteries are narrow large arteries narrow to smaller arterioles then into open into closed marshed network of uh, microscopic capillaries so capillaries capillary walls consist of a single layer of epithelial cells that is where is the exchange occurs which allows oxygen and other substances to diffuse across the wall into and out of the blood system by contrast the opposite of that the arteries and arterioles are thicker are thicker walled tubes specialized for blood transport and distribution what about their walls consist of three coats or tunica the layers three layers so we will see in a short the an inter an inner endothelial endothelial coat or the layer this is called the innermost layer is called tunica intima we will see in a minute tunica intima and the thicker walled tube is specialized uh, tunica intima an elastic middle coat sorry and uh, the outer innermost layer is a uh, tunica intima and the elastic middle coat of a smooth muscle is called tunica media as the name implies tunica media tunica is a tube or coat media is the, uh, the middle um, and external coat external connected tissue called tunica adventitia so these are their inter arteries so let us see the venous and how they are distributed the venous are consist of circulatory system the venous are facilities of circulatory system so what do they do they support circulation by conveying blood into the heart in systemic circulation in general venous carry the oxygenated blood the roles are conferring in pulmonary circulation how is it, how, how do they how how, how is this situation uh, confers it in pulmonary circulation pulmonary vein is to support reach blood from the lung to the heart or say to the left of ventricle veins and their branches of systemic circulation carry ox deoxygenated blood from the tissue into the vena cava which is superior vena cava and inferior vena cava and to the red atrium of the heart overall veins are larger and more numerous than arteries the walls of the venous like those of arteries are composed of three coated or tunicas an inner endothelial coat called tunica intima the middle muscular coat is called media um, a tunica media and the outer most connective tissue coat is called adventitia tunica adventitia what about the walls of the vein the walls of the venous are thinner than those arteries because they are capacitative and unlike arteries the vein is contain valves that prevent a blood backflow of a blood moving toward the left uh, the heart the large arteries or large numbers of valves are present in the veins of the limbs especially the lower limbs well, what why do we have a special and where do we have a, a valves in the lower limb because they prevent the blood out blood being back or blood turning back into the uh, leg and preventing the dvt and uh, what we call uh, what we call um phenosinsufficiency insufficiency phenosinsufficiency so that's when you have a problem with your blood facilities in the lower limb especially valves so veins are divided into two sets superficial and deep that and stomos or cross connect frequently with each other the superficial veins and deep veins they connect with one another that is the connection uh, to connect with one another in a medical term is anastomosis it is 500 
US dollar weight. <laughs> it costs a lot. <laughs> a medical man, a doctor or uh, an educated medical person understands uh, an anatomy, especially the anastomosis. What is, what is anastomosis means? Everybody does not know anastomosis. But the word connect, it's a common English language. So frequently with each other, they interconnect, they connect what one another across. That is called an anastomosis. So superficial veins lie immediately beneath the skin. So usually we see the veins. You can see and touch the veins, superficial veins. The deep veins generally are arranged in pairs and are situated on either sides of the corresponding arteries. So that is why they, you don't see the veins generally. What about here? We will see the lungs. What is lung doing here? Okay. Because in general, we said we will discuss the generally. You see the two, two hearts are highlighted here, left and right. Yes. I can remove, if you like, I can, I can hide the sternum. I can hide the sternum. Yes, you see. Now you see the heart lying between there. Yes. So, but as we said, we need to uh, discuss the heart. And I mean, we have discussed here the heart, the blood physicalis, whether they are artery, venous. But let us see okay, what we call lungs. So, lungs. The sites of what are the lungs? That are the sites of a gas exchange in the lower respiratory system. Are essential organs of respiratory system. So one lung is situated on the other side of the thoracic cage and is separated from one, uh, from the other by the heart and position a portion of other thoracic structures. Thoracic structures. So these are blood facilities. Yeah, a delicate double layer. Uh, okay, each lung is conical and has a light, porous, spongy texture. That is, if you, if you touch it, it's just like spongy. And as a, as a shape, it is a conical. And it also has a porous, yes, it has a little bit porous, yes. Yeah. So, it is also highly elastic as benefit is an organ that alternatively expands and contracts during breathing. A delicate double layer it serous membrane call it ballora or ballori in another word. Convert is the coverage, I mean the ballora or ballori pleura covers the surface of the heart, of the lung, I mean, sorry, of the lung. The pleura covers the surface of the lung and tips into the fissures between its slopes. So potential lobe space between these two layers contains a small fluid that prevents uh, moving the lungs from chaffing against one another, rubbing against one another. Uh, the uh, rubbing again is the, the thoracic wall, I mean. So the, the rest, the lungs rest at, at the top of the muscular diaphragm, and the lung has, uh, the left lung is divided into two lobes, the upper lobe and the lower. It's a general, uh, we will discuss every, every system in this uh, videos, but here is as an introductory, introductory short video, uh, of a cardiovascular, so because uh, exchange of gas exchange occurs in the lung, that's why we are now uh, talking about what we call lungs. So the lung is generally divided. The left lung is divided into the, um, the left lung is divided into two lobes, superior and and the lower and the lower. The right lung is divided into three the superior, the middle, which is the smallest, and the inferior. The lobes of both lungs are divided into segments consisting of small areas. 
of tissue termed tubules. Tubules. These tubules, we will see how do they work and how they are arranged. What about now? Cardiovascular system. Cardiovascular system consists of heart, plural vasculature uh, system, and plural vascular system, arteries and veins uh, that convey a plural throughout the heart. A contraction of the muscle in the heart wall creates pumping plural and delivers plural into an in, uh, to and from the lungs. So the process is called pulmonary circulation. And the blood to and from the rest of the body, the process is called systemic circulation. So each complete is the heartbeat. Each complete heartbeat is called cardiac cycle. When you breathe in and out, there is a one cardiac contraction and relaxation. This cardiac contraction and relaxation is called cardiac cycle. So it's con controlled. Cardiac cycle is controlled by the heart conduction system. It is it is it has internal a uh, connective tissue, uh, what we call a conduction system, conductive system. So conductive system, we will discuss in, uh, when we are discussing the heart. Okay, so the four grid facilities deliver the blood to, uh, to and from the uh, four chambers through the, the body. In total, the heart to be it is 60 to 7, 200 beats per minute. So above 100, there is some it has name so who's going uh, who everyone who is listening this video or, or, or watching this video will comment what is called when the heart rate is more than 100 and what what is that name C can you please write down okay and the other exercise is that when you when your heart deviates when the heart repeat deviates from the normal, which is 60 to 100, what about when it becomes lower than 60? 50, 40, 30, what is that called? Can you please write that name in your comment, please? Okay. And I will discuss the next video. I will say that name is in the next video. Okay. Circulatory system of an adult has an equivalent about... If we connect... In connect all plural facilities in an artal person so they will take 96,000 kilometers long it will be very long it's 96,000 it is 960 mile 60,000 miles <laughs> 96,000 kilometers very long of a blood facilities through which pass about 5 liters only 5 liters pass each minute each minute so this is the uh, so let us let us see the let us see what we call uh, uh, let us see as I said uh, the heart falfis and this video I will watch this video as uh, and see how the blood is pumped because we have discussed a little bit about as introductory uh, the heart the valves Pray the four heart valves control the flow of blood through the heart by opening and closing the heart chambers in a coordinated sequence the two valves located between the atria and the ventricles are called the tricuspid and mitral valves these valves facilitate the flow of blood as it moves into the ventricles from the atria. The other two valves are the aortic and pulmonary semilunar valves. These valves ensure that blood exits the heart correctly. Each of the four valves is composed of flaps called leaflets or cusps, which prevent backflow of blood in the wrong direction. Yes, this is the... Um what we call, we have seen the falfis. Yes, so let us see the structures of arteries and veins. In a minute, we will see also what we call uh, blood fissures. But this is the structure of the artery. This is the structure of the blood vessel artery. If you see 
anteriorly like this and blow or lateral view this is the artery and this is the vein do you see the difference yes so let us check the external tunica tunica as we said this is tunica externa or tunica alphantitia is the outermost layer this highlighted is the layer it's one of the outermost three layers it's one of the most uh, one of the layers of blood vessel it consists of mainly collagen fibers and contains nerves also in a large artery such as aorta the tunica alphantitia or tunica externa is supplied by a thin pillar vessel known as a fossa, fossa, uh, fossa, 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 fossa. The pillar vessel itself, subhanallah, as you see. So, as the name implies, fossa venosa, fossa fossorum, uh, the at the pillar vessel, at the pillar vessel which is very large and tough, like uh, orta needs a blood vessel, a blood supply that, yes, that supplies the orta itself. So let us see the tunica media. So as you see here is the medium. Tunica media in the middle three, what is the one, is the middle of the three layers of a blood vessel wall. It consists of a blood vessel. It consists of mass, smooth muscle and elastic fibers, external elastic membrane which is which lies beneath which lies beneath there as you see here which lies beneath and covers the layer of the smooth muscle it can contract to change the diameter because it's a smooth muscle yes and it contracts it can contra it can contract it to change the diameter of the blood vessel or lumen beneath the smooth muscle is, is another elastic layer the internal elastic membrane the thinness, the thickness of the tunica media varies between blood facilities. And it's overall thicker in arteries and veins. So, intima. Let us see the intima. Now we are in the middle of that blood vessel. Yes. Yes. This artery. Okay. Now we're in the middle. You see? You see? You see, this is the, the mo innermost one, this one, innermost. Yeah, so the tunica intima, tunica intima is the innermost of the three layer of the blood vessel wall. It consists of layer of endothelium, which is, con which in, con uh, is in contact with the blood flow through a lumen, blood flowing through the lumen, the endothelium, Consist uh, continuous with the heart endocardial lining. So in the large facilities, subendothelial layer exists between the endothelium and the tunica. So this is the again uh, what we call yes. So that is the vein. So let us see the blood vessels. These are capillaries. These are capillaries. So as you see here, this is the um, this is vein and it's and divide is continuous to divide and becomes vineol. Vineol so it becomes very, very thin. So when it becomes microscopic that you cannot see with your eye, it becomes capillary, very thin vineol an arteriole on the other side arteriole here is the arteriole and the opposite side is the venule so when the artery here the right uh, the above one the upper one as you see here here is the artery and it's, it divides continuously so it becomes arteriole and in the lower or the bottom of the screen you see here the vein that def it defies continuously and becomes venul. So in between the arteriole and venule, this 
structure in here in the middle which is like net network is called capillaries so in that example if you see in the pulmonary uh, venous and pulmonary arteries here the pulmonary vein which is the red one here because it takes blood oxygenated blood from the lung to the heart left heart or left atrium it here alveolar capillary network and it, it's the where gas exchange happens here gas exchange so if the other side the artery uh, pulmonary artery the fire is continuous lamp becomes a pulmonary arteriole here and it is blue because it, it is the opposite of the general or systemic circulation and it carries uh, the blood oxygenated and uh, poorly oxygenated blood or what we call the de deoxygenated blood from the systemic circulation from the heart right side of the heart right ventricle so so that is why it is blue but here is mixed network venous venule venule and arteriole and then in between there is a capillary network in here as you see so it becomes red when you come close to the venular side it comes red because it it, it, it missing and it it contains less carbon dioxide and rich with oxygen people think when you breathe in and out when you breathe in you you just take only car oxygen but it's it's not it's not only oxygen it's a lot of gases the breathe in the amount of breath or amount of air you breathe in contains a lot of gases different nitrogen and something else but oxygen is the one we use it and we need it but it is so there is a little portion a very small portion of uh, carbon dioxide also when we breathe out there is a carbon dioxide and there is a little oxygen amount of oxygen also but um this is the and uh, this is the what we call introductory video this is the last of introductory uh course a few short video which we intended let us see the last one the blood fissiles the function of the blood fissiles so let us see that video short video of a blood fissiles especially in general Re function production of the red blood cell here and this will be the red blood cells also called erythrocytes make up 40 to 45 percent of blood volume and function to transport oxygen from the lungs to the cells of the body red blood cells are produced inside the bones of the skeletal system particularly in the vertebrae sternum ribs and pectoral and pelvic girdles Inside the red bone marrow of spongy bone, stem cells known as hemocytoblasts give rise to the different types of blood cells, including red blood cells. During the development process, the hemocytoblast ejects its nucleus, allowing the cell to carry more oxygen to the tissues. Mature red blood cells enter the bloodstream via enlarged capillaries known as sinusoids. This is the end of our introductory course. Uh, especially we discuss it we intended to discuss uh, for the to discuss about uh, the cardiovascular system so it is as introductory but next time we will discuss the blood fissiles and the, after that we will discuss the heart both of anatomy and physiology but not in details because it's short videos not in much details not more than one hour and a, and a video not not more than one hour and a video and the last or the fourth video will be the blood facilities and it, it is all away the structure is it <laughs> you see it how it goes the blood facilities in everywhere this is an GIT yeah so we will discuss if free structure the blood facilities in and in details, blood fissure is in details, and circulation is in details, and the heart in details, both of anatomy and physiology, but not so much details. Um, I'm going to, to say 
only few words as an in generally in physiology but we will discuss uh, the cardiac muscle cells function as a single unit in response to what we call uh, the physiological stimulation because they are connected by they are connected by intercalated discs so they interconnected they are interconnected to form a lattice walk lattice walk they call it sensitium so action potential is pretty over the sensitium causing all the cardiac muscles to uh, cardiac muscle cell is to contract as one unit called unison. All right, the cardiac action potential can be divided into four phases. So, depolarization, repolarization, blood to phase, repolarization, and resting potential. So, we will discuss everyone in, uh, when we come into the uh, cardiac uh, circulation. And we mean, I mean the um, physiology of the, of the heart or the cardiac. But as introduction, as introduction, uh, impulses connecting, impulse connecting, contacting system, impulse contacting system of the heart, as I said previously, is called sinoatrial, not S N O. That is the pacemaker in the left atrium, in the right atrium. Sorry, in the right atrium. So the atrioventricular knot or AV knot it lies between the atrium and ventricle. So it contract, a contract. A tract of the connecting fibers called atrioventricular bundle that divides into a branch for each ventricle and modify nerve fibers, fibrils called Parkinson fibers in the walls of the ventricle. So, electrocardiogram or ECG is a recording of electrical activity of the heart. A normal electrocardiogram consists of P wave. A QRS complex, a T wave, and it is used for for diagnostic tools. But in cardiac cycle, in cardiac cycle, it's a carefully, it's the carefully, it's carefully regulated sequence of steps that comprises a heartbeat. A complete cardiac cycle consists of atrial contraction or systole, what we call or systole. Uh, atrial contraction or systole or atrial systole or a ventricular systole and atrial relaxation or diastole and a ventricular diastole so everyone has a diastole and systole the pass of the a blood vessel blood through the heart process of oxygenated poor oxygenated blood as we discussed it from the atrium to the heart uh, to the ventricle to the heart uh, from the red atrium to the uh, ventricle to the lung so and goes back into the left atrium left ventricle and is pumped as a systemic uh, so cardiac output is the quality is the quantity of a blood pumped by a heat of ventricle in one minute so the amount of blood expelled with each ventricle contraction ventricular contraction is called stroke volume cardiac Output is determined by multiplying the heart rate by the stroke volume. So the cardiac reserve is the difference between the actual volume of blood vessel plus pumping and volume of the heart is the capable of pumping. Uh, and the, sorry, the blood volume, the uh, the volume of the heart is capable. Uh, the volume of the heart is capable of pumping under under stressful condition. So the cardiac intake is, is the measurement of cardiac output in relation to body surface area. So when we the mechanism or central mechanism regulating the heart rate is uh, heart speed, heart rate, and the volume is the cardioregulatory receptors or centers in the medulla oblongata. So yesterday we said that medulla contains is the center of respiratory and pulmonary, a respiratory and cardiac center. So it does something else, but that is the two more main important when it related uh, to cardio to cardiology. So the nerve force control operates through the negative feedback system involving baroreceptors and chemoreceptors. I will discuss everything 
in the physiology detailed and detailed more detailed and more detailed and in the coming videos so this is the last if uh, the last word with the with my uh, introductory short video to circulatory system in general so next video will be the blood physiology in general so and if you have if you please and please have any comment or any suggestion please write down or uh, write down in your in the commentary in, your, in the youtube when you find when you watch after you watch the video so please and please your comments will help me a lot so thank you very much this is dr sadik hassan or Siddiq Mahmoud Hassan or Idikule Malin Wunaxan. And Wahana Chalina Magranas had that of Samara Kwatashan, while family San Wahana Magranas Akadli, and in a Magranas Comantiska, Kortan, Alka Comantiska, a YouTube cap, Taswaha Aunasan and Magranas are motivated, Nordan of video, Dumbo for Badan Sameo, and Kar and Shallah of Somali could do one no one, Samantona, and Shallah, video of Somali and of Samantona, one Robin Dona, the other Chamadu Gafaristan, and Shallah Tala. Salam alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته